welcome to another episode of Hashtag Sports. I am Paul. To my immediate left is a dancing Mario Granada. Now, I thought that was, you know, four whiskey sours at a wedding. thought that's what it would take, but apparently not. <laughs> to my right, you'll see Joe from Hashtag Sports, Ryan from RSN. Uh, thank you for joining uh, very much, gentlemen. So we're talking about DeAndre Hopkins. We just cut a live about this, but it's probably a little bit more to unpack. Ryan brought up a great point. Let's talk about it. If you want salty Twitter content, you can uh, turn to Mario, Joe, or Ryan. And if you're arguing with somebody in the comments section, how you doing? That's me. <laughs> Let's talk about DeAndre Hopkins in Buffalo. Let's talk about DeAndre Hopkins in Kansas City. But ultimately, what it means if things don't go well, right? Because you're you're buying a used car here right you're you're you check the car fax report a little sketchy right and you, <laughs> you're still looking at a car with 155,000 miles on it and uh you're hoping it's a toyota prius here right like that's just you're hoping it's a prius hoping it has more horsepower than a prius but you're basically hoping it's got the longevity of a prius so ryan this was something you had suggested so DeAndre Hopkins in Buffalo, DeAndre Hopkins in Kansas City. Again, things don't go well. What exactly is the what what do you think the likely outcomes are here? Or or why don't we start with what are you most concerned about with DeAndre Hopkins in Kansas City or DeAndre Hopkins in Buffalo as far as what would happen if it doesn't go well? Well, I mean, I think I know we talked off air on it. I think you it's it's kind of two outcomes, right? If if it doesn't work out in Kansas City for Hopkins, the finger is going to be pointed primarily at Hopkins. And, and say, you know, how could you not make it work with Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey? Like, how did you how could you not make that work? Right. Juju Smith Schuster made that work. And, you know, you're immensely more talented than he is. So I think it it's very, very much a bet on yourself situation. If you're DeAndre Hopkins and you wind up going to Kansas City, um, which I know we talked about in the in the previous show, that that may be what precludes him from going to Kansas City. You know, maybe he wants to go to a place where there's less pressure. Um, and there's multiple fingers being pointed at everybody else if it doesn't work out versus him. If he goes to Buffalo and it doesn't work out, um, Paul said it best, someone is going to lose their job, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's you know, the list probably goes Dorsey, McDermott, Bean is probably how that, that order of operations goes at that point. Um, I think Dorsey is an easy candidate to lose his job. Like you've got Josh Allen, you've got, you know, Stefan Diggs, you just drafted a first round tight end. You've gone gone out and gotten Damian Harris. You went out and got DeAndre Hopkins. Gabe Davis is your third wide receiver and you can't go out and win football games like that's that's a problem. If you're an offensive coordinator, Andy Reid doesn't have that problem because Andy Reid has been successful with a number of different players and a number of different mm -hmm. scenarios on multiple different teams. So he's not clearly going to lose his job. Patrick Mahomes is never going to lose his job. You know, he, he's going to retire on his terms in Kansas city. So, you know, again, like, like we talked about, there's, there's kind of two different outcomes and they're starkly different um, depending on where Deandre Hopkins lands. Again, we're assuming it's one of these two teams. It could be a, you know, he could decide to go back to Houston for all we know. Right. And just kind of mm -hmm. go to a place where there's mm -hmm. absolutely zero pressure. Um, mm -hmm. And all he needs to go out and do is, is just perform. Um, mm -hmm. But I think ultimately it's going to come down to one of these two teams. So, Joe, looking at if you're DeAndre Hopkins, right, you're looking at a second year offensive coordinator in Ken Dorsey. Uh, yeah. And then you're looking at a first year offensive coordinator in Kansas City, right, because the enemy is now gone. Does that factor into this at all? Or do you kind of look at this as, you know, it's Andy Reid, so that doesn't right. matter, you know, right. is that the feeling that that's a feeling that I got from you on this? It, yeah. it, is that true? That that would be my feeling. I mean, if if I go to if I want to go to Kansas City again, some of the pros about going to Kansas City. If I'm D Hop, I'm immediately the number one guy behind Travis Kelsey. I'm the number one wide receiver, and yeah, you're working with Andy Reid. And I think we've all known for a little while. I mean, just watch that Super Bowl back from last season. Andy Reid is the offensive coordinator of this team. And when we talk about pressure, if DeAndre Hopkins goes to Kansas. City, <laughs> like there is a lot of pressure a lot of eyeballs and a lot of finger pointing looking at brandon bean because there's no way you know ryan texas all or there's no way brandon bean can just let d hop obviously it's d hop's decision but if brandon bean lets that just happen there's gonna be problems uh matt Nagy is returning as the offensive coordinator obviously 
we're all in general consensus that Andy Reid is the play call, de facto play caller of the Kansas City Chiefs. Matt Nagy, the last time he was in Kansas City as the OC, it was Alex Smith, and they just drafted Patrick Mahomes. So effectively, this is the first year of him being the offensive coordinator with Mahomes at the helm. Right. So, yeah, and, and he right. turned that job into the head coaching job in Chicago. Don't forget yeah, that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I want to back up a little bit and I'm going to, I'm going to name some names and I, Mario's the historian here. We're in the way back machine, like near the border of where I think football is irrelevant. Like we're going to go back in the way back machine a little bit. Personally, I don't think anything more than 20 years ago is relevant in today's NFL. I think about that in almost every major sport. If it happened more than 20 years ago, the games have all since then, it's just not the same. Um, But I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to pull out 10 years. (laughs) It's, right. <laughs> at this point right yeah. i mean if it's soccer it doesn't matter because that's a, that that sucks <clears throat> so does tennis it sucks both how those sports dare suck. you how they dare suck. you they suck <laughs> right paul in the comment section <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna hearken to two names right because we talk about andy reed and typically when you think of andy reed and you think of the wide receivers that andy reed works with or the wide receivers that have been ultimately very successful you think of terry kill you think of um uh, deshaun jackson Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeremy Macklin. These weren't the biggest guys in the world. No, but then that Terrell Owens guy was pretty good. That was the one. Right. So back in 2004, yeah. he got a 31 year old Terrell Owens. And in 21 games, because he played T.O. paid 14 games, his 30 age 31 season in 2005 when he was 32. He only played seven, had 20 touchdowns in that time and almost 2000 yards receiving within that time. Right. Yeah. So the last physical like physical threat wide receiver like big physical guy that I can really remember Reed working with was like Dwayne Bow. Like, I just don't remember another guy that was big and physical like that. It just doesn't seem to be Reed's cup of tea, but there seems to be a pretty stark comparison between a 31 year old Terrell Owens and a plus 30 Deandre Hopkins here. Doesn't there I, to me, T.O. is is a physical specimen. And at 49, he can come back and he'd still got 40 catches for a team that he wanted to go on right now. <laughs> like, I don't know about that. Hopkins, to me, is, he seems more he, – he's not more he, – he's not a guy that's just going to maul you. I mean, Owens could run by you and he could just out-muscle you for the ball. Hopkins is more smooth. He's, he's, he's more savvy in how he plays the position. So, I mean, it could be one of those things where Reed wants to go back to the well and he wants to take a guy – and you know what? If you had to compare the Buffalo Bills versus the Kansas City Chiefs in the offensive play calling and what happens, you would prefer the Kansas City Chiefs because they got Patrick Mahomes there. You got Andy Reid. They've already won two Super Bowls. They've been to three. You're going to have that championship pedigree when you walk in the door. I'm not saying that the pressure in Buffalo and Kansas City is the same, but they've already won. They've already won. D Hop is if he's a ring if he's ring chasing. He'll more than likely go to Kansas City, and this may upset a lot of the Buffalo Bills faithful here, but that's that's what it is. They've proven that they can go there and win it. The Bills have not yet done that. So as far as being a T.O. comparison, I don't think there's anybody else that's T.O. I think I think the, the numbers that you're that you're saying are just purely for him going after a thirty a thirty plus uh, wide receiver who was a physical specimen at the time and still is. But I think what your point is trying to say is that. That's only the one time that he's done that. Otherwise, he's drafted or he's he's brought up within his system the guys that he wants. So he hasn't really gone free agent chasing a lot for those guys like that. So D Hop, while it's intriguing in Kansas City, may be like, okay, yeah, I'd love to get a to- another toy for Patrick Mahomes. It's more of listen, why we just drafted a guy in the second round. Let's try to build up the guys. And it's almost like the Tom Brady theory. It's like or Peyton Manning or something like that. Like whoever you put with them, they're gonna do well. But to Joe's point, the pressure that's going to be on D Hop in Kansas City, I think, is going to be immense, and he's going to have to prove that he's 130, uh, 100, no, not 130. I apologize. He's going to prove that he's a hundred catch guy behind Kelsey because everyone's going to compare him to Hill, mm-hmm. unfairly right. or not. It's he's he's going to be compared to Hill when he goes there if he signs on the line. Right. So how do you match up to that? Like if he catches a slant and doesn't take it eighty, he takes it forty. Like the Kansas City fans are going to be like, oh, this why did we sign this bum? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. And so, I mean, Kansas City already has their contested, contested get, catch guy, and that's Travis Kelsey. Yeah. You know, absolutely. like you can only you can only have so many guys in traffic for your yeah. offense to be successful, right? They can't all be in yeah. traffic for your offense to be successful. All right. So we're going to do a new game here at hashtag sports. We're calling it hashtag uh, hashtag stupid trivia. Five points to anybody who knows Terrell Owens' middle name. 
It is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Leslie. That's a good one. Nope. <laughs> oh my god. Is it a car? It it, it could be. <laughs> I remember it being a car because it is. He, he, said, yeah. he said he's like a truck or he's a car or he's a or something like that. It is something like that. Stop. Oh, I, I just no googled idea. it. I'm not gonna spoil it, but <laughs> it's pretty stupid. I remember hearing stupid. about it. It was like it was like a car or yeah. something like that. A a car yeah. So give me so give me a guess. Give me a guess, Mark. Uh, it's, and you're right. Right, uh, right. Ram, uh, it can't be Ram. What the fuck? I don't even know. I have no idea. I have no clue. Impala. Joe? I don't know. Okay, Impala. Impala. That's a good one. All right, Joe. Tacoma. Yeah. Tacoma. Tacoma. Yeah. 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 Tacoma was a good guess. They're both good guess. Guys, brace yourself. Terrell El Dorado Owens. Stop. I am City of Gold, baby. <laughs> city of Gold. <laughs> Is there nothing more Terrell Owens than the middle name El Dorado? Right? T E O. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know if hashtag uh, hashtag nation figured out at the onset that Paul like did like four shameless plugs about himself. Did you see when he mentioned the Prius? <laughs> you know, it got to be a life story there for a minute. I'm not going to say it wasn't. <laughs> I know it was. It was. It was just as funny as Ryan's curtain call that he mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "Well, Shawn Michaels is is a Josh Allen in this case. He's the champ. You can't touch him. So, <laughs> Hall and Nash are gone. So Triple H has to eat shit." <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, if you, I, like I like like Joe mentioned, I tweeted or texted you guys earlier today when the you know kind of the news that there was a, an arms race going on yeah. broke, and I just if you're Brandon Bean, like right, like this, these are the these are the types of moves that become like career defining moments. Right. And to lose Hopkins to a team that you're in direct competition with that has less cap space than you do, and arguably doesn't have a lot to put in front of Hopkins that you don't have besides, you know, we've got a couple more, we've got a couple of rings. Again, that's probably a big selling point for him, but there's not many cases that Kansas city can make that Buffalo can't also make. But I totally it's, it's like it's like a it's like a divisional trade, right? It's like I, I, one of those things you just you can't lose. You can lose them to anybody but Kansas City. And I just, get where you're oh, going yeah. with that, Ryan. But, you know, the the fact of the matter is when you make contract uh, offers to a player, it has no bearing on the salary cap. Right. You could offer a guy a billion dollars. It does. Mm-hmm. There's not it doesn't matter. You can offer a player whatever contract you want. It doesn't have to comply to the salary cap. There, that's not part right. of the collective bargaining agreement. Right. When you offer a player a contract, it doesn't have to be within salary cap compliance. So you could really sit here and say, what's the best way to help our financial situation is to make Buffalo pay the most money for what we think is a short term investment. Right. Mm-hmm. That That is in Kansas City's best interest because they have no room. Right. They've got no wiggle room. So what's the best thing you can do is use the resource of a team that, you know, is chasing you. Right. And if you force Buffalo into paying more for DeAndre Hopkins than ultimately market value is truthfully worth, then you've won if you're Kansas City. So it it makes sense for KC to be in the sweepstakes because anything they're talking to him about doesn't have to be real. Right, they could do it all under the uh, all under the impression of, well, we'll just cut Chris Jones. We joked about it in the live, like, oh, just cut Chris (laughs) Jones. There's all your money. You could just say that to him and his agent, like, oh yeah, we got the money. Doesn't matter. Look, look, yeah, yeah, but I mean, fine. You know, but you know, again, let's let's keep things in perspective here, right? Like, if you're if you're Brandon Bean, and Kansas City winds up with Hopkins and they go on to win the Super Bowl, there there is a there is a direct backlash that will come hard and fast as to how could you let that happen right mm-hmm. whether you want whether we want to play the backdoor telephone game politics you know hypotheticals that are going to happen let's be honest they're not going to go say they're going to cut chris jones because that's going to get back to chris jones's agent some way shape or form it's going to mm-hmm. deteriorate the relationship like these these behind closed doors meetings don't happen anymore right it just they, they just don't occur like they used to so there is a modicum of reality when these conversations are being had and at the end of the day if you're brandon bean and you have an opportunity to go add deandre hopkins and you have the opportunity to say i literally this season could not have done more to put a winning football team on the field for my coach you have to do what it takes to go do that and because i mean your quarterback's not getting younger i mean let's again you know josh allen's just he just turned 27 right the majority, the harsh reality is the majority of Super Bowls are won by quarterbacks younger than 30. If you're over the age of 30, 
your odds of winning the Super Bowl go down exponentially. It's 56 percent of Super Bowls that have been won have been won by quarterbacks younger than 30. Three of those that weren't were guys by the name of Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. Right. So if once you hit 30, that window becomes very narrow if it's open at all. So you yeah. have you have an uh, more the pressure that Kansas City doesn't have right now. If you're Buffalo, to ha- you have to go make a move like this happen. Like this is you went out and got a, a a defensive changing talent in Von Miller last year. You can have an opportunity to go out and go, potentially an an offensive altering wide receiver this year. You you have to make this move work if you're Brandon B. If you're legitimately in the sweepstakes, you have to make this move work. Mm-hmm. If you don't, you have to do everything you can to make sure it's not to Kansas city. Again, yeah, it's like a divisional trade. Like this is just something you cannot yeah. lose this. You know, this is the, you know, this is, this is the Americans losing the, the, the race to the moon to the Russians, right? Like you, you <laughs> have to do everything you can to make sure that that doesn't happen. And because that happened more than 20 years ago, Paul doesn't recognize it. I'm just saying. <laughs> True story. Yep. Doesn't matter. Miracle <laughs> doesn't matter. The moon landing doesn't matter. None I'm going to tie you to a chair and make you watch miracle because I told you, I swear to God, if the Russians would have won that game, your kids would have been Vladimir and Victor, okay? I'm just telling you. Is the pressure the same? Okay, so we talked about if D-Hop goes to Kansas City and Kansas City wins the Super Bowl, the amount of finger pointing that's directly pointed at Brandon Bean. If DeAndre Hopkins, and and there's been riffs about this, nothing concrete, but let's say D-Hop goes to the Jets and the Jets win the division, can you still can you point the same finger at Brandon Bean and say there's the correlation? I think you could. I think in Ryan's point, and I think that's what he's trying to say is that if D Hop goes anywhere but Buffalo, I mean these are these are the points that make or break a GM. Like mm-hmm. the way that we're talking about this seems like in ten years they're going to make a thirty for thirty about it. Mm-hmm. Like whatever happens of the D Hop result, it would have if he goes to the Jets. And they end up winning the the division and then beating the B- B- Buffalo Bills in the playoffs if they make it there. Yeah, I think the same thing happens. I think you're sitting there going, "Listen, you had a chance to get this guy on your team. You let him go to a division rival. You let him go to a conference rival or in Kansas City or anything like that, and you didn't get it done. What? It, it completely erases every good thing you've done for this team: drafting Josh Allen, getting Von Miller, getting all these other guys, and getting the winning culture, winning you know." having four straight 10 win seasons, you know, it, it doesn't matter. A lot of that stuff doesn't matter. And, and you know what? My question was like a spinoff of yours, Joe, was the fact that, and I wanted to start with you and then I'll go to Paul and then Ryan. What would be worse if D hop goes to Kansas city and they win the super bowl or D hop goes to the bills and they lose the super bowl. Like, or, or you don't, or they don't even go. Like yeah. they lose to Kansas City in the playoffs. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll add that as a little like one A one B type thing. I'm just curious. Like, what would be like? Okay, you went and got this guy. Does does that still put the onus on being of? Hey, you went out and got this guy. We told you he was damaged goods, and look what happened. He ended up leaving in the second quarter. Whatever scenario you could think of. But what do you think's worse? Kansas City, he wins. Buffalo, he loses. So you're worried about him retiring at halftime of a game? Not like that's happened before. <laughs> uh. What are, what are the odds that lightning could strike twice? <laughs> Only in Buffalo, really. I, I... So so Brandon Bean, in my opinion, if 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 the Bills get D Hop and we lose in the playoffs, or if we get D Hop and don't make the playoffs, Brandon Bean is kind of off the hook for me, or at least maybe if not off the hook, he's now moved back in the list of who's fired first, right? Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, if we get if we get D Hop. And we lose in the playoffs for Brandon Bean, um, it, it lowers his you know, chance of being fired. For me personally, it sucks so much more to lose than to watch someone else win. So <laughs> it like just so much more. You know, yeah. KC winning, fine, whatever. I don't care who wins Super Bowl if the Bills don't. I just <laughs> don't. I honestly don't. People have hatred for New England. I get it. Hatred for listen. I have two favorite teams in, in football. The Bills and whoever helps the Bills. That's it. I don't care about anything <laughs> else. This, all the other stuff is bullshit, guys. I don't care. Again, as Paul and Mario always say, we have nothing to do with the outcome of games. We have nothing to do with the outcome of games. <laughs> what I want to see when I see a team like the Eagles and Chiefs in the Super Bowl is a good game. So when it comes to your question of what would suck more, 
whether it be the the, the Chiefs getting D Hop and beating us, that would suck. But I hate losing yeah. so much more. So us losing with D Hop to me would just oh, that'd be worse. Cause Paul, cause see, Joe Joe roots for a good game in the Super Bowl. I root for a plane to crash into the stadium. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, it's an interesting question uh, when you start on a, to look at what what the fallout is of decisions not made, right? Like that's, you, you can live with regret your entire life. And most, most sport, sports fans do like <laughs> there's things that we are, to, that we directly regret that we had absolutely no part in the decision of yet. We regret them, right? Like, Oh man, if I was never a bills fan, I never would have had to sit through watch Nate Peterman suck the soul <laughs> out of my body. You know, like it, Paul, come on. You're, you're missing the obvious one. Do you regret catching that foul ball at Wrigley Field? <laughs> Again, something uh, that happened more than 20 years ago. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I don't mind the I don't mind the Christmas cards from Moises Alou. I don't. You know what? <laughs> Even though they're filled with obscenities, it's okay. I think it's an interesting time to be a sports fan because we're in an age of information where there was so much info that we were just never privy to as fans, even 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, Whereas now, you know, who players are talking to, like you can go and look up who players agents are and then reach out to their agency and see what it's about. If you're a media outlet, right? These were things that were kind of, uh, you had to know someone who knew something to know these things. Um, You know, like Deandre Hopkins, I bet a lot of Bills fans don't know that when he renegotiated his contract with Arizona, he didn't have an agent. He did that. He renegotiated his contract without an agent. And I think he realized, and one of the reasons why he's now hired an agent, is that sometimes you don't meddle in things you don't understand. Right. And after the whole Lamar situation, I'm sure it was, yeah, I'm going to hire an agent. Right. Like mm, things are going south here. I'm going to be prepared. I'm going to do the smart thing. I'm going to hire an agent. Now, he's kept it pretty close to the vest, who exactly that is. It's kind of hard to find that information. But the truth is, uh, you know, the world of football and the world of communication now is out there so much that we could sit here in our respective homes and laugh about how horribly bad it would be if DeAndre Hopkins were signed and it went poorly and whose jobs it would cost. And you know what? Probably be pretty close to right because the, the amount of information that's out there is just absolutely amazing. Um, and that's fun. That's what makes this stuff fun. I'm not going to answer. So in, in, in short, wait, I'm not going to answer your wait, question. I, like, that was, <laughs> I stood at the podium at your Ted talk for five minutes and got nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's like going to a Sean McDermott presser. <laughs> uh, Ryan, you, you gave some points on it before, but I, just, I know you said that heads were going to roll. People would have to lose their jobs in, in Buffalo. But if, they, if DeAndre Hopkins went to Buffalo and the Bills didn't didn't get the job done this year, and or well, he went to Kansas City, what doesn't get the job done? Like what does what do you mean? You got to you got to win the Super Bowl. If you get okay. D Hop, you have because of the expectation. I mean, expectation is put on by the fans and put on by the media and stuff like that. But it's also put on by the players. And you have to take some accountability for some of the things that go on. Now, am I saying that if they get D hop and they go, you know, 15 and two and they get to the Super Bowl and they lose, you know, it's, it's not, I don't think it would be a Marty Schottenheimer type deal where he goes 14 and two and loses to the Patriots and they fire him. Like, I don't think that's going to be it. I, I, I think that there, that, you know, that proverbial hot seat may, may come on. But I think if the Buffalo Bills were to land DeAndre Hopkins and they do not win the Super Bowl in 2023, there is going to be some internal shuffling with the staff at one Bills drive. And I'm in complete agreement with Ryan on that. I think that there are going to be things that are going on. If he does not, if he does not go to the Bills and he goes to Kansas City and they win the Super Bowl, I also think there's going to be a long, hard look at the decisions made. But you made a great point, Paul, in saying, you know, you can't say what if of a decision that you didn't make. Like this, this decision was taken out of our hands. You know, you could say that. You say, listen, he wanted to go there. He, he's ring chasing. He wanted to play for, he was either going to, he was only going to sign with us for 20 million and he signs there for 10. You know what I mean? A one year prove it deal to try to go get shop his wares somewhere else. So you don't know. Like there's all these interworkings. And, you know, as you said, as much information as, as there is out there we still don't know 
we still don't know a lot of the stuff that's going on with these players and how they're negotiating certain things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think you really have to, you know, beg the question of, you know, at his age, can you afford to sign a one year deal? Right. Like, can he do it? Like players have done it and it's worked out well for them, but there's just as many players who have done it, that it was the start of the end for them. Right. So um, can D hop afford to sign a short term deal? Like, I well, think any team would want him at twelve million dollars. I think oh, Kansas yeah. City and Buffalo are they're every they're all in at twelve mil, right? Yeah. And so well, you know, it's it's just it's just part of the game. You know, it's just part we, of the game to play. Can we break down that break that down? Like I wanna I wanna talk to I mean, I want Joe and Ryan to answer this for me. When we talk about one year prove it deals, what if because we, we say it like all the time, like it's it's just flows out you know we said all the time one year prove a deal what really does hopkins have to prove if he signs a one-year deal either with kansas city or buffalo what is he looking to prove that he could win a super bowl with a super team or that he could still put up 100 catches like joe and then ryan like what do you if he signs a one-year deal what is he essentially proving because he's already proven that he could play is he proving that he could stay healthy? Is he proving that he could be a number one again? Like, what is he essentially proving with the one year deal? Well, during our live, Paul brought up a point about like the incentives that you can add to a contract and, and about the incentives that if he didn't do those last year, they would count towards next year's salary cap. When talking about the bills and moving some of the salary cap, well, immediately what came to my head was you could put a, a thing in a contract that says if you play 16 games, you get because mm-hmm, he yeah. hasn't played 16 games in two seasons, two years ago because of the MCL, last mm-hmm. year because of the uh, the suspension. And so what does what does basically getting a full year off do to the body? It, it you know helps you heal. So yeah, I mean he didn't get hurt last year, at least not significantly hurt, but he only played in nine games i believe it was uh last season so yes can you stay healthy at 31 years old can you stay healthy for a full season and when you you're used to being that physical specimen just better than everybody while these cornerbacks and safeties are getting younger faster and not better necessarily but they're just getting smarter and figuring out how to adjust to you so how are you adjusting to them right it's not just about are you a, are you still that physical presence? We know what DeAndre Hopkins has done. What can you do now? You know, I, I think about the movie Moneyball when he talks to uh, the the outfielder, and he's just like, I don't, I'm not signing you for a play you were back then. I'm signing you for who you are now. Well, DeAndre, who are you now? And that's pretty much what you're asking a lot of players when it's one year prove it deals. It's saying, what are you now? And a lot of one year prove it deals don't just go towards the player, go towards the team as well. Like the, the team has to prove something to the player as well. Or they're saying, this is what we can afford to do. We can afford to give you one year prove it deal. Is that what you want? Again, there was debate in the last, uh, in the live stream is Hopkins looking for that one year prove it deal or is he looking for that last big contract knowing that he's 30 and he might not get another one. Yeah. I think uh, the player referencing was David Justice when he was playing. Uh, it was more than 20 years days. ago. I don't pay attention to anything. Oh, that's to right. Yeah, that's a good one right there. Yeah, that was a 36-year-old David Justice yeah. uh, who uh, who still hit 266. Yeah, I wonder if we can get the Yankees to pay $3.5 of D-Hop salary. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's I one, one team to throw out there because, you know, we talk about Buffalo. We talk about Kansas City. Um, I think that there's a dark horse team in the NFC that isn't going to be talked about. Nobody's going to say it, but a team that is a definite worry for me, and it's San Francisco, because you have Shanahan. You put a big physical. You put a player like D Hop in on that offense and hold on. Right. Like Kittle is just not the player that I think a lot of people thought he was coming back from injury after injury after injury after injury. I think you have to look to do the best you can to supplant some of those targets. Um, And do you have a quarterback? Sure don't. Right. But do you have one of the best offensive coaches in the game? Yeah, you do. Right. And Shanahan and Julio, uh, that was pretty decent. So yeah. the 49ers scare me, especially since they've got like 12 million cap space. And again, you get creative with this contract. You easily could get Hopkins in for sub 10. 
right for the first year of his deal so the san francisco scares the hell out of me as as a like uh flyer uh, as a flyer team on the wall yeah they're te- they're tenth in the vegas odds right now san francisco yeah. is yeah the land that's Hopkins. san francisco is the third fourth fourth nfc team oh, who are the detroit, other philly, who are the detroit the, philly and dallas dallas the, the, oh lord yeah. They're always in it when a free agent pops up yeah. because Jones yeah. is a lunatic. For me, I don't, I don't see Hopkins needing to prove anything. I don't, I don't know. I think the attraction for Hopkins of a one-year deal would be one year, go get a ring, and enter free agency at the normal free agency time when everybody's at full capacity to come out and give a giant contract. Mm. I think he it, right now is at some type of a disservice because everyone has essentially made their signings for the season. Does D hop want to go no. to Buffalo no. for a season, see how things shake out with DJ Moore and Cole Komet and the running back squad that they've added. And, you know, the defense that they've put together in Chicago and go, you know, I don't want to go play there now. I don't want to be what Trey Lance or not uh, Trey Lance, what Justin, Justin Fields. Fields. On. Mm-hmm. Um, but Maybe I'll go ring chase with Buffalo for a season. And then next year, maybe that's my big, that's my landing spot, right? They can offer me a giant contract, a big splashy signing and they're on the offense and, and you know, the off season. But I think, I think the attraction of a one year deal for Hopkins is much more go get a ring because it's the one thing that's been eluded me my entire career. I've played on nothing but crap franchises. I'm going to go give a, my best run at a ring and then next season, when everyone's got their cash and everyone is able to get into a bidding war for me, I'm just going to go sign the biggest contract I can get and and go from there. Can he get a true bag when it comes to these other teams? Because, again, is Chicago willing to pay for a guy like him right now? Probably mm-hmm. not. Right. You know, are these other teams that are have built their squads and say, hey, we're going to be, you know, we're going to be a this year, which is, you know, I don't know, we're shooting for nine and eight at the, by the end of the season. Like that's what we're hoping for. Mm-hmm. Is it worth giving D hop the money now? Or is it, Hey, come talk to us in next off season, see how things work out with, with fields. And, you know, maybe you're willing to come sign for us when we can get into a true bidding war. And it really can kind of like, you know, mm-hmm. we can, we can all, all play show me and, and, you know, Hopkins, what, you know, what contract do you want to sign? So Man, I think well, that there's all that that goes into this type of negotiation. Man, what was your college life like when you can make a reference, like show me, like what was i don't <laughs> never mind this is that's pg show that's so, working and that's working in banking for the last 10 years oh all okay those phrases that come up yeah okay all right i thought this was a fraternity thing and we were getting it was about to get weird i was just making sure Hold so on. it's always it's gonna get weird on. i just want to i i want to close up the episode with this so um first off if d hop does go on a one-year deal and i'm, I'm going to make a point that's kind of counterintuitive to this in a second but if we're talking about DHEP on a one-year deal, what do we think a reasonable number is as far as total receptions where he doesn't lose value, right? So uh, the the reason I bring that up is because if you are DeAndre Hopkins, you come to Buffalo and you get 65 catches, do you maintain the same value that following free agency period, right? So what's the number that maintains his value and does Kansas City or Buffalo offer a better chance of that number? So I guess we'll just go at this point left to right. So it's Mario, Joe, Ryan. So what's the number, right? What What's the catch number, the reception total? Or is it a different number? Is it touchdowns? Is it, you know, what, what's, the, what's the number that you have to get if you're DeAndre Hopkins to maintain value in next, eight, in next free agency period? I think you have to go at least 80 and 10. To try okay. that, to try to get that, I think you need eighty receptions and ten touchdowns in okay. order to make, because he can then go back to the drawing board if he has less than that. I'm just saying, if he has less than that, he can go back to the board and be like, "Listen, I proven myself as a one in this league. I was, you know, I was one A or one B, however you want to look at it, with digs. I didn't get as many targets as him, so this is why my numbers are lower than they would have been. That's why I purposely put into my contract unlikely to be inserted in, uh, uh, you know, earned incentives." So therefore, if I if he wanted me to be a one, I could still prove to be a one. He can he can provide that little hint of doubt in whoever's mm-hmm. going to be signing him that he's still able to be that guy as a one A by himself, rather than you know one B is like oh yeah you're much better as a one B now. No, I'm not. 
Mm-hmm. No, right. Well, that's the risk, right? That's yeah, the risk yeah. when you're not the number one on a team is yeah. the fact that you're looked at as a number two. That That's going to cost you money. All right, Joe. I think it depends on a team. If it's Kansas City, at least two teams. If it's Kansas City that signs him, receptions matter more than touchdowns because you know Kelsey is going to get in a lot of running there. So, you know. Great point. Um, so, I think if it's Kansas City, you're talking, like Mario said, 80, 90 catches. Um, and also, targets matter too. Are you still able to get open? Are you <laughs> trusted by your star quarterback? If it's Buffalo, I think touchdowns matter more than than receptions because we've seen Buffalo struggle in the red zone, and that's why you're getting a big guy like DeAndre Hopkins. So if you have 65 catches, but you know you have close to double digit touchdowns, that's that's huge. Um, so I think it really depends on which team he signs with, and obviously that's different for all other 30 teams in the NFL too. Um, but with those two teams, that's what I would say. A great point, right? Uh, Dawson Knox treatment. I like I like where your head's at. Ryan, tough sledding, two great points. What do you got? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna piggyback on Joe's because I agree with him. I think there's there's two there's there's two different things to look at. What was one B in Kansas City last year it was Juju Smith Schuster, right? Seventy eight catches, nine hundred yards, three touchdowns. What was one B last year in Buffalo? It was Gabe Davis. And what did Gabe Davis do last year? Right, forty eight touchdowns, eight hundred and thirty six yards, and and uh, seven touchdowns. So there's a, there's you said a 48 so, touchdowns. You meant 48 receptions, right? Sorry, 48 receptions. Yeah, 48 receptions, 800 and thir- 830 yards, and seven touchdowns. So right. it, there's a stark dichotomy, right? It's 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 five right. more touchdowns, but it's 30 fewer catches. So it's what you do with the catches and with the opportunities you're given within the parameters of the offense and what that offense allows, right? There, there's mm-hmm. fewer mouths to feed in Kansas city as it were. Right. Or at least the mouths that you have to feed are a lot, are a lot smaller. When you bring in D hop, there's two large mouths that you have to feed and everybody else kind of gets what's left where if you come into Buffalo, you know, you've got, again, Diggs. he's going to demand 150, 160 targets. That's just the, the type of, of guy that he is in this offense. Davis is gonna, you know, he's in a contract year, so he's not going to sit quietly on the sidelines as someone comes in and takes you know, 90 targets um, on the other side of him, he's going to want his as well. You've added a weapon in the first, in the, uh, in the first round, you've got to think that your wide, your running backs are going to become more involved in this offense. They have to, if you're going to be successful, if you're Ken Dorsey. So again, I think it's more so I, I would be, if I'm, if I'm Hopkins, I'm less concerned with the volume and more concerned with what does this offense allow me to do with the volume that I'm going to see. And that, that's kind of, you know, so if you're, you know, if he's one B at, you know, Gabe Davis level for Buffalo, I think that teams are going to look at him and say, there's a lot of gas in the tank. If he goes to Kansas city and he sees Juju Smith Schuster production, Juju just turned that into wide receiver one for new England. So I don't think there's any reason to think that that can't become wide receiver one for DeAndre Hopkins next year, if he goes to new Orleans or, you know, wherever he's going to wind up where they're looking for this type of offensive weapon. Sure. So um, first off, I think every wide receiver looked at Allen Robinson and said, don't want to do that. (laughs) Right. So, you know, goes, goes to what you think is going to be a high powered offense and then just absolutely fizzles in the pan. Right. A, A guy that had a reputation for having durability issues, but was ultimately could be a dominant receiver if healthy, uh, DeAndre has kind of got that reputation in the short term right now. Uh, I think every player wants to avoid an Allen Robinson situation because that that went horribly, horribly, horribly wrong uh, uh, out with the Rams. But the final point that I want to make, and I guess we're going to end the episode on this. I think there's a large movement in the NFL for players who don't have to play to maintain value to just wait it out, Right. So what are the odds that DeAndre says, you know what, I'm just going to wait till week seven before I sign somewhere. I'm going to wait till week eight because I'm going to come in. I'm going to get my, I'm, I know I'm going to get my looks. I'll pick up the offense. I've been in multiple offenses. I'm not worried about that. I'm such a dynamic player that I'll build chemistry. Would it behoove DeAndre Hopkins to kind of punt that four or $5 million that he'd make in the week to week salary to play the long game and say, I'm going to wait till week eight before I decide where I go, because then I'll be playing by week 10. And then I'll only have six or seven weeks of production at that point, uh, six or seven weeks of, of actual football. And then we'll get to the playoffs and then the team will be what happens with the team. You know, that's, that's not on me at that point. Right. So do you think that waiting for waiting for Deandre Hopkins to play is actually the path he might take here? Because there's no law that says he's got to play right now. 
if you're DeAndre, aren't you saying, well, I'll punt $5 million now because I know that I'm going to make $30 million in the final free agency period if I play this thing right. Let me read a stat line for you guys. 64 targets, 42 catches, 572 yards, eight touchdowns, 13.6 yards per catch, which is third highest in his career. That was Hopkins stats in 2019. I'm sorry, 2021 after he came back from the suspension, played 10 games. All right. So there is precedent for DeAndre Hopkins sitting, not doing training camp, not doing the first six weeks, not being allowed within the team facilities for uh, up until week seven of that season. Right. There's precedent that he can walk in and become a legitimate wide receiver one. 10 game production. That's a really good production. 42 catches, 572 yards and eight touchdowns. Um, so he could absolutely, I mean, he, he could very much just wait who needs me more. Um, you know, who has an injury that goes down? Um, you know, I mean, Bill's fans are kind of like, you know, Travis Kelsey's 32 years old. What happens if he gets hurt? Right. And that entire offense becomes like, okay, now we have to do something. You know, now Chris Jones becomes expendable because we have to go get an offensive weapon. Imagine right? like, a world where that happens. Oh, my yeah, God. Can I mean, you, can you and, and injuries are, you know, injuries very much happen every day. I mean, he could have every intention of saying, hey, we're going to do it's Buffalo or Kansas City, whoever needs me more. Um, Kelsey goes down. That raises the value for Kansas City. God forbid Allen goes down. That completely removes Buffalo from the from the discussion when it comes exactly. to DeAndre Hopkins. Right. So he could just sit back and say. Let's let's watch this play out. Let's see what the what, you know, kind of what develops on the battlefield. Um, and I'm just going to go join the team that looks like they're going to win, you know, the 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 war at the end of this thing. And um, and if you want to toss me, you know, eight million bucks for 10 games, then, hey, let's go run it back and, you know, add a couple of incentives like we saw with OBJ for like playoff performance and that mm-hmm. kind of stuff when he signed late with the Rams. Um I could definitely see that that type of scenario, especially if he's waiting until next season, because, again, he wants to go to the table with everybody in the league with bullets fully loaded in the chambers and ready to come after him in free agency. <laughs> um, you know, it's an opportunity for him to lessen the, uh, the the lessen the chance of injury if he plays fewer games, obviously. And let's be honest about that Super Bowl with OBJ. He was having MVP level performance in that Super Bowl. Right. He, he was, was going to be the Super Bowl MVP, MVP until he got hurt. Absolutely. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. If Without he would have finished the game, he would have been the Super Bowl MVP. Yep. And imagine that. Imagine that free agency period for him. Right. Oh, He's Lord. not playing on a one year, $15 million deal this year. That's for, right. That's for that, damn sure. Yeah. Right. Exactly. All right, Joe, well, what's what, what you got? Well, from a team pro- aspect to to, you know, you kind of combat what Ryan just said. Are you willing to pay a wide receiver, 32 year old wide receiver? number one wide receiver for money and he has three straight seasons where he hasn't had a full season like you're yet to prove to me that you could play a full season in the past three years are you productive when you play seven eight nine games yes but if i'm paying you number one wide receiver money you need to be productive for 17 games so for me i don't think it's the smartest decision for him to sit out he can and you know what if you're chasing rings maybe that's the best way to do it um, because again, of what Ryan said with injuries, but if you're looking for the biggest payday you can get next year, might not be the best way to go. Because again, that leaves three seasons of teams saying 10 games, nine games, let's say nine games. But like you guys said, if he if he performs in the Super Bowl or if he performs for those nine games and in the Super Bowl run, then that obviously makes a difference. But I just don't know if that's a smart move. So you think yeah, teams, can, can, teams can you picture think a he's scenario? masking something? So you're thinking team, teams think he's masking something at, at that point by only playing half a season? Yeah, okay. potentially. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he could. Be. Uh, yeah, I, I would say 2021, he probably gets a pass on, right? I mean, that was a right. that was a suspension. That was not, you know, that was. A, but I mean, could you envision no, a scenario 2022 where was the suspension wasn't it last year? Yeah, 20 was last year a suspension. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, yeah. so um, so in uh. Could you imagine a scenario where Buffalo's, you know, five and three to start the season? Hopkins comes in, they wind up ripping off, you know, whatever it winds up being nine out of their last 10, one seed, they go on to win the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Um, Does does that same concern crop up for you if you're if you're the next team that Hopkins is looking to sign with? Because. You know, you go from a team that's, you know, two games over 500 to a team that winds up the one seed. And, you know, clearly, you know, 
again, in this scenario, he maybe transforms that offense to, mm-hmm. you know, taking it to a different level, different gear. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, does that change how you approach things if you're that next team that, that offers that contract, given the fact that he only comes in for the last 10 games of the season? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's still 32 years old. I mean, you, if you're a GM, you have to always be very careful of what you're buying. And, you know, last thing you need is to spend Allen Robinson. Uh, you spend a whole bunch of money and then all of a sudden something happens. And it's like, why did you spend a whole bunch of money on a 32 year old wide receiver who hadn't completed a season in three years? Yeah. You're looking at a guy though, who <clears throat> a lot of questions come up about D hop. When you talk about his first eight seasons, six out of those eight seasons, he played the full season. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. those other two seasons, he played 15 games each mm-hmm. season. So you're talking about a guy that's like, he may be resting on the fact that, listen, I've been durable my entire career. I had an MCL. That's the only reason I was out. You know, and then you talk about the PEDs. Well, is that why you are always ready to go each week? Is that, you know, are we gonna have this crop up again with you? He could he could take a route of OBJ where OBJ was just literally just chilling like the entire year, but he he's not coming off an ACL. So there's no reason for him to just stay on the sidelines and do with that. He can pick and choose where he goes. The thing for me with Hopkins, if he's chasing the bag. He's not chasing the rings, which is fine. He's not going to either Buffalo or Kansas City. <laughs> Let's just be honest, guys. He's going to go somewhere that will offer him a three-year, about $60 million deal. Neither one of Kansas City or Buffalo can offer him that. The Raiders. The, the Raiders. But he, he could, oh, my God. Him across from Devontae Adams. Stop it. Stop it right now. But the point is this. If he is just looking for money, Bills and the Chiefs are the two teams that he's not going to, even though mm. – yeah. They have been in talks. We understand that. And I understand that too. But the point is this. If he wants just his last deal to retire on and do what he has to do, I want a four-year, $65 million, $70 million deal, and I know I can play because I've always been healthy. I have nothing else to prove. I've always been healthy. So he could be doing that. But the the, the possibility of him just like chilling and waiting in the wings and be like, hey, uh, I'm ready to come in now, that is a definite possibility. I do, I do like that possibility. I don't think he'll do it, but – it possibly he could. Well, that's going to wrap Raiders it up plus thirty five hundred to sign Hopkins. By the way, They're plus thirty five hundred. That's the money to me. That sounds like money <laughs> to me. Listen, Tom Brady now owns part of them, so anything is possible. Oh lord! Why, if you're God, if you're Tom Brady, what are you, what are you doing? Vegas, Vegas, baby. It's Vegas, baby. The guy broke the system. I mean, everyone's talking about why, why don't these all these other teams, these quarterbacks, take less money in in order to play? That's what that's what Brady did, and they gave the money to the other players on the team. Well, not everyone was dating a half a billion dollar model, idiots. Right. Not not everyone right. is dating. Not not most football players aren't dating somebody who makes his contract look tiny, and she <laughs> probably lorded that over his head more than one occasion. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Oh, well, you made I'm thirty sure. million this year. Nice, nice job, sweetie. I make that. <laughs> <laughs> I, made, I made that with this one photo shoot that I did. All right, that's going to wrap it up for us here at hashtag sports. That is my um, weatherman thing. Hold on. That's that. Yeah, there we go. I got it that time. That's Mario. <laughs> that's Joe. That's Brian over past Joe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thanks to Sean Rogers from Mr. Rogers Homes. Uh, of course, you can check out the description of this video for any other pertinent information, our Patreon, and all that fun stuff. Uh, Thanks again for joining, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.